All right, guys, so this is going to be part two of our all shapes and sizes lesson. And um, in the last lesson, we basically played around with putting in different kinds of pictures and different kind of picture effects. And um, <clears throat> what I kind of want you guys to do, honestly, is to just make sure that you're actually playing around with all the different picture effects. Um, just because we're not using all of them in this particular lesson doesn't mean this isn't your opportunity to actually um, play around with some of these and click on them to actually see what they do. Um, some of them can really add a little bit of um, pizzazz to your actual picture, all right? And um, as far as picture effects go, um, you know, you have shadow effects that you can add to your pictures. You have outer shadows and inner shadows. Um, you have reflections that you could put on your images, and sometimes these reflections will make your images go off the slide. You have these different glows, and we talked about this yesterday, how they all have very different and weird names to them. So just realize when you hear something that says orange 11 point glow accent color four, you should know that I'm talking about a color of some kind. And when, it's, when you see the word glow, you should be like, oh, that's a picture effect. Um, the soft edges, I don't ever really use these, but you can kind of see what they do. As I um, get higher and higher in my points, it just kind of fades out the picture from the outside in. And then bevel perspectives are a really good way to make your picture actually pop um, a little bit. It kind of gives your picture a little 3D effect. And then we have all these different 3D rotations, which are really cool as well. All right. And the 3D rotations, um, I probably use these more than anything because you can actually add uh, on top of this, you can add another effect, especially when you're doing like text and text effects, which we'll get into in a little bit. Um, these 3D rotations, blah, 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 3D rotations are actually pretty cool. All right, so what we're doing here, let me arrange my windows. I'm gonna grab my PowerPoint here and take it to one side and let it actually touch and then grab my directions and make that my other side here. What we're actually doing is part two of our directions here. And I think most of it is dealing with slide five, which is one of the only slides we didn't really touch yesterday. So it says on slide five, titled Stress Management Tips, insert a folded corner shape from the basic shapes category. So you'll notice here, if you actually hover over these things, um, although you can pretty much put anything in a content box, there's nothing for shapes. Uh, so what we're going to have to do is go up here to where it says insert. Let me click off there. Insert, and you'll see something called shapes right here. And um, shapes are really cool because you can actually add text to your shapes, but you can kind of see some of these shapes are um, better than others as far as holding text goes. Uh, the hearts are really good for holding text. Any of these rectangles are really good for holding text. Any of your arrows down here. But some of these things <clears throat> are pretty much just to bring attention to something in your slide, not really meant to hold text. Um, but shapes are kind of cool, and you're going to play around with them in this um, presentation. So it says it wants us to insert a folded corner shape from the basic shapes category. Um, it should say for folded corner rectangle shape, which would cue you to actually look through the rectangles group and notice how they're broken apart. You have recently used shapes, you have lines, rectangles, basic shapes, block arrows, equation shapes, flow charts, stars and banners, call outs, and action buttons. Um, so what we're going to do here is insert a shape called a folded corner rectangle, and that's called a snip single corner rectangle, rounded rectangle, snip diagonal, snip and round. Did I miss it? Insert a folded corner shape from the basic shapes category. I don't even see it. Snip diagonal, rounded single corner, rounded same, rounded corner rectangle. Weird. Hmm. Oh, okay. So if you actually look at the directions here, it actually says from the basic shapes category. So I'm so used to doing this for the tests. Um, when you actually take your Microsoft test, they'll want you to use this rectangle here. But in basic shapes, we actually have more of a square with a folded corner, which is kind of what they want in the directions here. So let's go ahead and click that. And now to actually insert my shape, I'm just going to click and drag. And you'll notice that I get this little square with a folded corner. I can click on this um, content box now and go ahead and delete it. 
and get rid of it just by pressing delete on my keyboard. All right, it says rotate the shape slightly. So let's just give it a little spin. I'm gonna make mine a little bit smaller too so it doesn't go off into the green over here. It says change the shape fill to gold. So whenever you're working with shapes, and you click on your shape, just like a picture, you're going to get something up here called Drawing Tools, and you're going to click on the Format button. And everything you're going to need to do is going to be right here. Here's your Shape Styles, Shape Fills, Shape Outlines, Shape Effects. And then we have Quick Styles over here. We have Text Outlines. We have Text Effects over here. There's a lot of things you can do with your shape. All right. So it says change the Shape Fill to Gold, which would be right here. Shape Fill. And let's find Gold gold accent three we just want gold I think it's down here that's orange that's yellow gold accent three gold accent three alright so in the directions, it actually just says change the shape fill to gold. What you're going to see under shape fills is that we only have um, gold accent three. Uh, because of our theme in this presentation, we don't have just have gold. We have gold accent three, which is fine. That's what I want you to pick for this particular presentation. And if you actually scroll down, <clears throat> you should notice that there is some kind of order to your actual colors. So this is gold accent three. This is gold accent three lighter by 80%. This is gold accent 3 lighter by 60%. And as you go down, it gets darker, or less light, I should say. Darker 50%, darker 25%. So just know that your, your basic colors are going to be up here. And then if you see a color that says, like, darker 25% or something like that, it's going to be in this area of your actual colors, all right? And then standard colors, if it just says, like, red, you're going to go down here. If it just says, like, orange, you're going to go down here. Okay, so if it doesn't say an accent or um, a shadow or lightened or darker, you're going to go down here. Okay, and these are your basic colors up here for your themes. All right, and your square should look something like that. Change the shape outline to no outline. So if you kind of look at our shape right now, you can kind of see I have a green outline on it, and I hate outlines on shapes, so let's just go to the shape outline, and over here, we're going to say no outline, just like that. And now you can kind of see there's no outline on our shape. Uh, use shape effects to add a shadow from the outer category. So we just talked about this. If I click on the shape and I go to my drawing tools up here and go to format, um, you're going to see under shape effects, you're going to see something called uh, shadow. And notice we have outer shadows, inner shadows, and perspective shadows. It wants us to add um, any shadow from the outer shadow category. So just kind of pick one and make it happen. Okay, you can kind of just barely see it right there. Um, some shadows, and you can kind of um, change the effect a little bit to make it look a little stronger, but some shadows you can just barely see. Add the following text to the shape. Make stress relief a priority. So just click in your shape and start typing. Make stress relief a priority. Okay. I can't really see <clears throat> my text, so I'm actually going to select it and make it a little bit bigger. Kind of like that. That's much better. All right, now we're going to just change the shape because I don't like the folded rectangle thing. Change the shape to one of your choice. Note that you may have to resize the shape in order to see all of your text. So I'm going to actually make it look like this with a little starburst, which is the shape that I usually do. So when you click on your shape and you go to Format, um, let me bring this open all the way so I can see all of my tools. There. Uh, you'll see something over here that says edit shape. And then you'll see something that says change shape. And it's just going to basically take the shape and the text inside my shape, and it's going to change it to something that I, you know, looks a little better for me. So I'm just going to say let's do like a starburst or an explosion, explosion one, explosion two. And then I'm going to go ahead and resize it and make it bigger so that my text actually does fit into my shape. Okay. Notice how I still have my shadow on there. I still have everything else that I had added to my other shape. So before you just delete a shape and um, reinsert a new one um, that you already have effects on, make sure you just go to Format, 
and edit shape. That way you don't have to add back on your shadow. You don't have to sharpen your image again, okay? It says when you're finished, your, sl your slide should look like this, and it does. It looks just like that. So now, the last part of this project, guys, is um, basically you going through here and making sure everything has animations and transitions. Um, we also have slide number two here, which you can kind of see. It says new wellness program. <clears throat> Jeb Biofuels will be implementing its new wellness program in, in January. The program will provide resources and opportunities for employees to improve their overall health. What I want you to do with this slide is pick one of the options that we have gone through as far as inserting your pictures and go ahead and add a picture either to the content box or by going to insert pictures or online pictures and your picture should have something to do with maybe Jeb Biofuels or maybe just Biofuels, um, something relevant to the slide. And I'll leave that up to you. That is your choice. And uh, when you're done, I would like you to go ahead and add a picture effect of some kind uh, to that picture, whether it's a shadow or a glow or maybe a bevel effect. I don't care, but go ahead and make sure you have a picture effect on that slide. Okay. Um, and what I want you to do now is go ahead and um, select transitions and let's go ahead and put transitions on all of our slides and in the last lesson when I talked about transitions you but you guys basically used every transition under the Sun what I'd like you to do now is kind of play around with your transitions and notice that when you actually just pick like one transition for all of your slides let's say I want this one to go from the left it actually really does add um, a little bit of um, continuity to your presentation all right and um, Edson and a couple others, as I was grading your papers, I noticed that you guys were using um, your transitions very well. So if I just use the same transition, like push, for the first four slides and then play my presentation, it actually gives it this really cool effect of just kind of pushing my slides with the new information. Like that. All right. Um, if you use a different transition for all of your slides, it just gets to be a little old after a while, and it just kind of makes me think that you've never done PowerPoint before, and you're just kind of playing around. All right, so go ahead and add transitions um, to each one of your slides, and um, really look at your transitions this time, and make sure your transitions are really smooth, okay? All right, so the last thing that I want you guys to do once you're done with putting on your transitions there, is go through and make sure you animate everything in your PowerPoint okay and what I mean by animate everything in your PowerPoint is literally everything every shape every picture every title box and this one's gonna be pretty specific what I'd like you guys to do is to um, add animations um, to your presentation and I would like you to go ahead and um, change the effect or the animation options which means you're gonna have to deal with your animation pain so what I'd like is for all animations to basically come in with no click um, and in order to do that basically I'm gonna go to the animations tab and let's say I want it to fly in here and I want it to fly in from top so it goes down like that this one here I would like to go ahead and fly in as well but let's say I want this one to fly in from the left Okay, let's say I'd also like it to fly in as one object. You'll notice that under effect options, you have as one object over here. And I think I messed that up in yesterday's video. So just like that. All right. Again, when you're in the audience, it's the last thing you want to wait for is just to see all the animations hit one by one. It's kind of annoying. All right. Um, so in order for, for me to make these fly in with no click, what I'm basically going to do is open up my animation pane. And you'll notice here that I have my animation one here, and then I have animation two. I'm just going to say, for animation one, I'm going to say with previous. That means this is actually going to start when my slide comes in. And I'm not going to have to click anything, not even one time. I'm going to click on animation two over here, and I'm going to click my drop down. And again, I'm going to say with previous. So now let's check out what this actually does. Transition enters, and with no click, my content enters. Okay? I do have to click to go to the next slide, and that's fine. Um, sometimes you want a little bit of control in order um, to actually um, advance your PowerPoints when you want to. That way you know your audience has enough time to actually read the information that's on your slide. All right? All right. And that means you have animations on every single slide. All right? Um, so just make sure, guys, that you are actually following directions here. That's why I make these videos. I often honestly do not make them for my health all right so um yeah
that's all I really have to say here. Make sure you play around with your animations and transitions. Um, when we actually get into something called text effects, you'll think this is actually really cool, and I'll go ahead and show you kind of uh, a little preview of what a text effect can do for you. So if I just click on my text here, and I click on stress management tips, what I can actually do is... Okay, sorry, I keep getting interrupted while I'm trying to record this video. All right, so again, um, something really cool you can do with text. Um, just like a picture effect, just like a shape effect, you can do a text effect. Um, so let's do like a text effect, and let's say I want a 3D rotation on this thing um, to make it kind of catty-cornered. Like that. Okay. I'm also going to put something called a bevel effect on it. And like I said, a bevel is kind of a 3D effect, and it's going to make my text kind of pop a little bit. Once I actually have that text effect on there, check this out. I can actually click on um, Format Text Effects or Text Boxes, and I get all these different options. If you actually click right here where it says Text Effects under Format Shape, you're going to see something that says 3D Format, All right, and click on that. So this is really cool. Check this out. So right now, if you look right here, it says depth and contour. So depth is going to actually affect my 3D, but I want to be able to see it, and right now it's white. So let's change that to black so I can actually see it. Notice how my text has this little black outline behind it, and it says my depth size is 4.5. Let me increase that, and check this out. This is going to freak your freak. Boom. It's like super 3D, like Superman text effects, all right? So um, play around with your text effects. Um, play around with your shape effects. You can do this with um, shape effects as well. If you do like a 3D rotation on the actual shape, let's say we want it to kind of look like that. Let's say we want to put a bevel on there again. And uh, let's say we want to actually go into shape effects this time. Right here. 3D depth. Right now, it looks like the depth is like this black-ish color, but let's go ahead and make it black and increase our depth. Cool. So right now, my depth is like 47 or something like that. All right, this video is so long. I'm going to stop it right now.